now we'll be starting with the independent mcqs of the indirect tax portion the first one x and company a supplier registered under gst in meghalaya he wants to opt for composition levy now here the x and company is registered under gst in the state of meghalaya and they want to opt for what the composition levy and here <coughs> they are asking what will be the aggregate turnover aggregate turnover limit for composition levy so in the state of meghalaya as we have seen the agriculture uh, aggregate turnover limit for composition levy will be rupees 75 lakhs in case of your aggregate turnover in the preceding financial year exceed rupees 75 lakhs then in that particular circumstance you will not be eligible to opt for composition scheme so this is 75 lakhs then a person making interstate supplies from madhya pradesh which is not notified handicraft good or predominantly made of hand notified products it's not there is compulsorily required to get G, uh, registered under gst now here if you are interstate supplier of goods then you will be compulsorily required to get registered under gst irrespective of your turnover so here the concerned person will be compulsorily required irrespective of what the aggregate amount of the turnover in the financial year irrespective of the aggregate amount of turnover so first and or second second and fourth option is what uh, uh, here not correct basically the uh, fourth option is <coughs> much more correct in comparison to what the third one so answer will be fourth here that in case of making interstate supply of taxable goods irrespective of the aggregate amount of turnover in the financial year this is a correct option because if you are making interstate supply of services then you can make the supply of services then your turnover must not exceed to be 20 lakhs or 10 lakhs as the case may be depending upon the state where you have been registered then here which of the following supplies of services are exempt under gst testing of agricultural produce is exempt definitely then supply of farm labor is also exempt under entry 54 and warehousing of agricultural produce is also exempt so all the three services all the three services they are exempt in this particular case all the three services are exempt next is mr narayan goyal has booked a room on rent in a sunshine hotel for purpose of lodging on 10th of august gst is not payable if the value of accommodation for value of such for such accommodation is if it is 1000 rupees or less unit of unit accommodation 1000 rupees or less then gst is not payable so here the answer is rupees 800 per day this is the correct answer then input tax credit is not available in respect of services on which tax is paid under composition scheme this is correct goods uh, given as free samples this is also correct and goods used for personal consumption credit will not be admissible so in here in all the three cases credit will not be admissible in all the three cases credit is not admissible then next is shubh and company a registered person supplies taxable goods to unregistered persons it need not issue tax invoice if the value of supply of goods to such person is less than rupees 200 and the recipient does not require say such invoice if the value of supply is uh, uh, in this particular case is uh, less than rupees 200 so it is if it is 150 then in that particular circumstance they will may not require what issue a tax invoice now various taxes have been subsumed in gst to make one nation one tax one market for consumers out of which of the following determine which taxes have been subsumed in gst basic custom duty the same has not been subsumed here basic custom duty has not been subsumed then uh, taxes on lotteries it is uh, separately levied under the state environment tax so fundamentally here the taxes which have been subsumed is what tax on lottery that has been what uh, subsumed now in gst entertainment tax environment tax is not subsumed so fundamentally your answer will be what 
2, that is taxes on lotteries. Then services by way of transportation of uh, dash by rail from Chennai to Gujarat is exempt. So here pulses, military equipments, pulses are not in agricultural produce. Electric equipments and zagri. So here exemption has been provided in relation to what? Which of the following they are asking? Whether it's pulses, whether it's military equipments, whether it is what? Uh, Jagri. So fundamentally, exemption has been provided in relation to pulses and military equipments. Jagri is not been made exempt. So it will be one and two. Answer is one and two here. A is the answer. Then services by way, way, way of warehousing of what is exempt from? tax services by way of warehousing basically of uh, which of the following is exempt tea beetle leaves okay zagri the same has been exempt processed cashew nuts is not exempt so answer will be one two and three answer is one two and three okay now here GST is not payable by recipient of services in the following cases. Now services provided by way of sponsorship to ABC Limited located in India that is taxable under reverse charge mechanism. Then services supplied by director registered under GST of Galaxy Limited to Mr. Krishna that has been covered under what? forward charge mechanism as the services are provided to Mr. Krishna. Then services by department of post by way of speed post to MNO limited that is also covered under forward charge mechanism and services supplied by recovery agent that has been covered under RCM. So which of these services they have been covered under RCM? It is 1 and 4. B answer is 1 and 4. They are covered under what? The, <coughs> you know, reverse charge mechanism. Answer, which is not payable by a recipient, which are under forward charge, they are asking under forward charge. So, 2 and 3 are covered under forward charge. So answer will be 2 and 3 in this case. 2 and 3, they are covered under what? Forward charge mechanism. The next is Mr. X, a casual taxable person, is not involved in making taxable supplies of notified handicrafts or pre permanently made handmade, handicraft, handmade notified products. Which of the following statement is true for Mr. X, a casual taxable person? Now here Mr. X is required to take registration under GST, under any circumstances. Mr. X is not required to take registration or GST under any circumstances. That is wrong. He will be required to obtain what? Compulsory registration. Then he is required to obtain registration under GST if the aggregate turnover in financial year exceeds 20 lakhs. He is required to obtain registration under GST if the aggregate turnover in financial year exceeds 40 lakhs. This is also wrong. So the answer will be what? He will be required to obtain compulsory registration. Mr. X has to compulsorily get registered under GST irrespective of the threshold limit. He will be required to obtain say compulsory registration. Then the registration certificate granted to NRTP is valid for a period of 90 days. Basically it is valid for a period of 90 days from the date of registration effective date of registration or the date or the period which has been specified in the application for registration. So this is a 90 days will be the answer here. Next is which of the following activities shall be treated neither as supply of goods nor supply of services. So basically 
neither supply of goods nor supply of services. Permanent transfer of business assets where ITC has been availed. It is coming under the ambit of deemed supply. Transfer of IPRs is supply of service. Transportation of deceased, it is covered in Schedule 3. That is neither supply of goods nor supply of services. And services by an employee to the employer in course of employment, that is also covered in Schedule 3. So the answer in this case will be third and fourth. That is third and fourth. D is the answer. Then balance in electronic credit ledger. Balance in electronic credit ledger can be used against payment of what? Output tax only. It cannot be used for payment of interest. It cannot be used for payment of penalty. It cannot be used for payment of, say, late fees. Next is how the aggregate turnover is calculated for determining the threshold limit of registration. How the aggregate turnover is calculated. So fundamentally, how you will be what is the aggregate turnover? The term aggregate turnover it has been defined in section two six basically. That is aggregate value of all taxable supplies, excluding value of invert supplies on which tax is payable by a person on reverse charge basis and interstate supply. This is wrong. It is aggregate value of what taxable supplies, excluding the value of invert supply on which tax is payable under reverse charge. Exempt supplies also included. Export of goods and services included. Interstate supplies of a person computed for each state separately, that is also wrong. It is computed on all India basis. Then aggregate value of all taxable intrastate supplies, export of goods and services, exempt supplies for each state separately, that is wrong. But here it is aggregate value of what? Taxable supplies, excluding the value of invert supply on which tax is payable by a person under reverse charge. Exempt supplies will be included, export of goods and services, and interstate supplies will be included of a person having same pen computed on all India basis but excludes taxes if any charge under the GST law. So C D answer is correct here. Within how many days a person should apply for registration apart from provisions of voluntary registration? So within 30 days from the date when he becomes liable for registration. Within a period of 30 days from the date when he becomes say liable for registration. Then next is Kaleem and Associates. Kaleem and Associates made an application for cancellation of GST registration the month of March due to closure of business. Its application for cancellation of GST registration was approved on 4th of September and by the proper officer by passing an order on the same on 14th of September. In given case, Kaleem and Associates are required to file the final return. He is required to file what? The final return. Final return is required to be filed within a period of say three months from the date of the order of cancellation of registration. So here it must be filed within a period of uh, say in three months, so it's October, November and December. So he will be required to file the final return on or before 14th of December in this case. Next is Zylo and company has three branches in Jalandhar, Amritsar and Ludhiana in the state of Punjab. Amritsar and Ludhiana branches are engaged in supply of garments and Jalandhar branches are engaged in supply of shoes. Which of the options is or are legally available for registration to Zylo and company? Zylo and company can obtain single registration for Punjab state declaring any one of the branches as principal place and other two branches as additional place of business. Zylo and company can obtain separate registrations for each of the three branches. Yes. Zylo and company can obtain one registration for shoe business and another registration for common garment business. This is wrong. So answer will be here. In this case it will be one and two. Either one and two. It will be either one and two. Then what is the validity period of registration 38 granted to a normal taxpayer? It is valid until the same is cancelled. So it is permanent until unless the same is say cancelled. Next is how many days an application for revocation of cancellation of registration can be provide made provided no extension to the said time limit has been granted. 
so within how many days we can make an application for revocation of cancellation of registration basically it is within a period of 30 days from the date of service of cancellation order so it is within a period of 30 days from the date of service cancellation service of cancellation order we can make an application for revocation of cancellation under section 30 so the answer will be what within 30 days from the date of service of cancellation order then can a registered person under composition scheme collect GST on his outward supplies from recipients well, no he cannot collect GST composition tax is to be paid by himself so composition tax cannot be collected from recipients as we have already discussed the same then in case of GTA service tax is to be paid under forward charge in case the rate of GST is what 12 percent so the answer is GST is payable when GST is payable at rate of 12 percent then which of the following services are not exempt from GST which of the following services they are not exempt from GST there is yoga camp conducted by a charitable trust registered under 12 AB of the income tax act well, yes it is exempt then we are having service provided by business correspondent with respect to saving bank account in rural branch it is also exempt services provided by code blood bank for preservation of stem cells this is also say exempt services provided by commentator to a recognized sports body it will be what taxable the same is taxable rest services are exempt however services which is provided by a commentator to recognize sports body it is exempt then which of the following activities is supply of service which of the following activity is supply of service that is what transfer of right in goods or undivided share in goods without transfer of title of goods it is supply of service it is goods here transfer of title in goods is supply of goods transfer of title in goods under an agreement which stipulates that property shall pass at a future date upon payment of full consideration as agreed it is also supply of goods so answer will be in this particular case one then uh, next is what here which of the Rama limited has provided the following information for the month of September now here Lama limited has provided the following information for the month of September interest rate taxable outward supply we are required to compute the aggregate turnover interest rate taxable outward supply this will be included interest rate exempt outward supply this will also be included turnover of exempted goods uh, will be exported goods will be included and payment made for availing GTA services it is taxed under RCM it is taxed under RCM hence the same is not included same is not included so the answer will be what 23 lakhs in this case then P limited has a registered office under the Companies Act 2013 in the state of Maharashtra from where it ordinarily carries on the business of taxable goods it has also a warehouse in the state of Telangana for storing the said goods the warehouse in the state of Telangana storing the said goods now where will be the play, place of business here he will be in Maharashtra as well as what in Telangana both Telangana and Maharashtra next is what 
an exempt supply includes what supply of goods or services or both on which a tax nil rate of tax will yes then non taxable supplies yes then supply of goods or services or both which are wholly exempt under section 11 of the cgst act or section 6 of the igst act yes so fundamentally all the three will be included answer will be d 1 2 and 3 next is which of the following services are exempt from gst which of the following services are exempt from gst services by an artist by way of performance in classical art form painting forms of painting and sculpture making not sculpture making sculpture making is taxable then class services by an ar artist by way of performance in modern art it is also be taxable services by an artist by way of performance in folk or classical art forms of dance theater with the consideration there of exceeding 1.5 lakhs that is also taxable answer will be must be d then services by an artist by way of performance in folk or classical art forms of music dance or theater with a consideration not exceeding rupees 1.5 lakhs so consideration not exceeding 1.5 lakhs then here services by way of admission to is not exempt from tax museum it is exempt national park it is exempt tiger reserve is it exempt recognized sporting event where admission to cricket costs 500 per person it's not exceeding 500 per person is exempt so it will be what taxable it is 600 per person therefore it will be taxable then discount which is given after supply has been effected is deducted from the value of taxable supply if such discount is given as per the agreement entered into at or before the time of supply definitely such discount is linked to the relevant invoices definitely and proportionate itc has been say reversed by the recipient of supply this is post supply discount all the three conditions must be satisfied the answer will be d in this regard all the three conditions must be satisfied then in which of the following situations recipient need to add the input tax credit availed by him to his output tax liability in which of the following supplies so fundamentally when payment is not made within 180 days from the date of invoice then in that case you will be required to add the itc so availed to the output tax liability and pay interest thereon if payment for supplies along with tax payable thereon under forward charge is not made within 45 days that is wrong if payment for supplies along with tax payable thereon under forward charge is not made within 90 days that is also wrong it is what if payment for supplies along with tax payable thereon under forward charge is not made within say 180 days from the date of invoice that is correct then if payment is uh, along with the tax payable thereon under forward charge is not made within a period of 1 year from the date of invoice that is wrong then they are asking which of the following statements are correct revocation of cancellation of registration under sgst or utgst shall be deemed to be revocation of cancellation of registration under cgst that is true cancellation of registration under sgst or utgst act shall be deemed to be cancellation of registration under cgst act that is also true revocation of cancellation of registration under sgst or utgst act shall not be deemed to be that is wrong and cancellation or of registration under sgst act or utgst act shall not be deemed to be cancellation of registration under cgst act that is also wrong so the answer will be in this particular case will be a a that is both 1 and 2 then 33rd is if goods are received in lots or installment now here itc can be taken when the last lot or installment is received so here itc can be availed in upon receipt of the last lot then next is for banking companies using input and input services partly for taxable supplies and partly for exempt supplies they are using partly for taxable supplies and partly for exempt supplies which of the following statement is true which of the following statement is true the first is itc can be compulsorily restricted to 
the uh, credit attributable taxable supplies including zero rated supplies yes it can be restricted then 50 percent of eligible itc on inputs capital goods and input service shall be mandatorily taken in a month and receipt uh, rest shall lapse that is also yes so the answer will be both banking company and choose to exercise the option either a or b so in this case banking company can choose between options a and b now next is a supplier takes deduction of depreciation on gst component cost of capital goods the supplier cannot avail itc here because he has already taken depreciation on the tax component so he will not be able to avail itc of the tax component then warehousing of which of the following services is exempt from tax warehousing of rice is exempt basically warehousing of uh, minor forest produce is also exempt warehousing of zegri is exempt and warehousing of coffee is exempt so in all the four cases every a answer will be one two three and four then which of the following service received in course or furtherance of business without consideration amounts to supplies which of the following services received in course or furtherance of business without consideration amounts to supply number one is what import of service by a person in india from his son settled in usa import of service by a person in india from his son well settled in usa it is without consideration it will tend to amount to supply because he comes under the ambit of related person import of service by a person in india with his brother well settled in germany it will not be supply import of service by a person in india from his brother wholly dependent on such person in india in france that is what supply an import of service by person in india from his daughter wholly dependent on such person in india in in russia that is also supply so it will be first third and fourth first third and fourth will come under the ambit of supply the answer will be a in this case the next is which of the following persons engaged in making intra state supplies from uttar pradesh as prescribed below is not eligible for composition levy under subsection 1 and 2 of section of 10 of the cgst act 1 and 2 of section 10 basically of section 10 must be there even though their aggregate turnover does not exceed 1.5 crores here in preceding financial a person supplying restaurant service he will be definitely eligible to opt for composition scheme a person supplying restaurant service and earning say bank interest he will also be eligible person trading in ice cream here the person who is what trading in ice cream will also be eligible person supplying service of repairing of electronic items it is yes it is yes answer will be yes here now the time of supply of service in case of reverse charge mechanism is what the if payment is made within 60 days from the date of invoice it is the date of payment or if payment is not made within 60 days it is what 61st day from the date of invoice so date on which payment is entered in the books of accounts of the recipient the date immediately following 60 days from the date of issue of invoice or date on which the payment is debited in the bank account so the answer will be what uh, earlier of a b and c answer in this case will be what the earlier of a b and c which of the following service does not fall under reverse charge mechanism there is services supplied by arbitral tribunal to a business entity located in ladakh the same falls under reverse charge mechanism sponsorship services provided to partnership firm located in jammu and kashmir it falls under rcm sponsorship services provided to body corporate located in kerala same falls under rcm services of renting of motor vehicles provided to a recipient other than say 
a body corporate services of renting of motor vehicles for passengers provided to a recipient other than body corporate so fundamentally here if renting of motor vehicles services there to a recipient other than a body corporate the same does not fall under say reverse charge mechanism no in this particular case so the answer will be what d then which of the following services are exempt from gst admission to circus where entry ticket cost rupees 550 up to 500 rupees per person it is exempt so it won't be exempt interest charge on credit card balances it is taxable credit card balances taxable services by an organizer to any person in respect of business exhibition exhibition in india it is taxable business exhibition outside india it is exempt then services by a foreign diplomatic mission located in india it is foreign diplomatic mission located in india is exempt then itc of motor vehicles used for making dashes allowed itc of motor vehicles basically itc of motor vehicles used for making which of the following is say allowed one is what transportation of goods eligible taxable supplies of transportation of passengers eligible taxable supplies of imparting training on driving eligible in all the three cases answer will be d here in all the three cases the same will be what eligible then which of the following persons is required to obtain compulsory registration now persons exclusively engaged in making intra state taxable supplies tax on which is to be paid by recipient on reverse charge basis under section 93 of the cgst act so person if he is say receiving the services in case he is what receiving the services which are chargeable to tax the tax on reverse charge basis then you know rcm is applicable for supplier it is not then person making interstate taxable supplies from other than special category states of taxable services up to rupees 20 lakhs is service supplier will be getting the benefit of exemption here up to 20 lakhs then persons making supply of services from other than special category special category states through an eco to collect tcs other than supplies specified under section 95 of the cgst act with the aggregate turnover up to rupees what 20 lakhs that is also exempt then person who make taxable supply of goods or service or both on behalf of other taxable persons whether as agent or otherwise that is basically what they require what compulsory registration then next is a non resident taxable person is required to apply for registration within how many days within 30 days from the date when he becomes liable for registration no within 5 days he has to apply at least 5 days prior to the commencement of business answer will be at least 5 days prior to the commencement of the business then rc granted to a casual taxable person on nrtp shall be valid for the period specified in rc or 90 days whichever is say earlier whichever is earlier 90 days from the effective date of registration whichever is earlier so the answer here will be what earlier of a and b then in case of supply of services by nbfc other than a distinct person invoice is to be issued within 45 days from the supply of the service so here the invoice must be issued within 45 days then next is where the goods are being sent on approval for sale or return at are removed from before the supply takes place the invoice shall be issued before or at the time of supply the invoice shall be issued within 6 months from the date of removal earlier of a or b or later of c or b so it should be earlier of a or b it should be what earlier of a or b answer is c earlier of a or b in this case the invoice shall be prepared in duplicate in case of taxable supply of goods it should be in triplicate and in case of services it should be, it must be in duplicate 
so answer will be triplicate and duplicate answer will be triplicate and duplicate here then next is which of the following shall be discharged first while discharging the liability of a taxable person so first of all you have to discharge the all the dues relating to the previous tax periods number 1 then all the dues relating to the current tax period number 2 number 3 is demands raised under section 73 or 74 answer will be all dues related to previous tax periods then due date of filing return is within 3 months from the date of cancellation or within 3 months from the date of order of cancellation whichever is say later whichever is later final return is required to be filed then which of the following statement is true under gst law grandparents are never covered as related person to their grandson or say granddaughter now next question is which of the following statements is true under gst law grandparents are never considered as related persons to their grandsons or granddaughter that is wrong grandparents will be considered as related if they are wholly or mainly dependent on what their grandson and granddaughter grandparents are always considered as related wrong then grandparents are considered as related person to their granddaughter grandson and granddaughter only if they are wholly dependent on their grandson or granddaughter that is true and grandparents are considered as related person to their grandson and granddaughter only if they are not dependent on their grandson or granddaughter that is false then next is alcoholic liquor for human consumption is subjected to state excise duty it is subjected to central sales tax and value added tax yes then both a and b answer will be both a and b next is if a tax invoice dated 21 21 of services received by him Mr. A has a tax invoice dated twenty one twenty one. If input tax credit will be lost if it is not availed on or before, it will be twenty one twenty two. No, it is thirty one twelve twenty one. Then twenty one twenty three wrong. It is a due date of furnishing the return for the month of September or the date of filing of annual return for financial year twenty twenty one, which is earlier. so answer is what the due date of filing the return for the month of september or the of the next financial year or the due date of uh, what file the date of filing of the annual return which is earlier the input tax credit shall not be available in respect of goods for personal consumption it is blocked under section 175 then membership of club provided by employer to employees as per company's in internal policy that is blocked under section 175 then travel benefits extended to employees on vacation such as leave travel or home travel concession as per the company's internal policy that is also blocked under section 175 so answer will be d in this regard answer will be d in this regard then which of the following is not considered as goods under the cgst act 10 paisa coin having what a sale value it is what 10 paisa coin having a sale value of what uh, rupees 100 shares will be security they are neither goods lottery tickets they are goods now here in this particular case if a currency is held for numismatic values it will not be coming under the ambit of currency the same does not come under the ambit of currency so in this particular case the currency may not be held for numismatic value so fundamentally the answer will be what in this case which is not regarded as goods is shares it is not regarded as goods they are not goods shares of say unlisted company 55 it will be b then mr ram a jeweler registered under gst in mumbai wants to sell his jewelry in a trade expo held in delhi rama jeweler registered under gst in mumbai 
wants to sell his jewelry in trade expo held in Do Delhi. Which of the following statement is false in his case? Say he needs to get registration in Delhi as a casual taxable person. This is true. He has needs to pay advance tax of his estimated tax liability. This is true. He needs to have a mandatory place of business in Delhi. That is false. He needs to file GSTR 1 or IFF and GSTR 3B for Delhi GSTIN for the month or quarter as the case may be as he what is registered. So fundamentally this is also say true. So 56C is the answer. Which of the following treated is exempt supply under GST? Sale of alcoholic liquor, this is non-taxable supply, hence exempt. Hence exempt. Then supply of healthcare services by hospital, it is also exempt. Transmission of electricity by electricity transmission or distribution utility. This is also exempt. So all the three are exempt. So answer will be D. Then which of the following is a recognized system of medicine for the purpose of exemption? Allopathy is there, Yunani is there, Siddha is there. All are three, all of the three. All of three are recognized system of medicines. So here all of the three will be recognized system of medicine. It is D. Then 59th question is which of the following services exempt under healthcare services provided by a clinical establishment? Chemist shop in hospital selling medicines of public at large. No, it will <coughs> basically the same will uh, they are saying exempt under healthcare services. This is basically taxable. Then food supplied by canteen run by hospital in patients as per diet prescribed by the Hospital dietitian, it will be exempt. Then food supplied to visitors or attendants, it will be taxable. And advertisement services provided by a hospital to a pharmaceutical company for the asthma pump by displaying it prominently in the hospital building will be taxable. Then next is in case of supply of goods for following information is, is provided, advance received, it will not be taxable. Invoice is issued on 15th of April and goods are removed on 25th of April. So time of supply will be what? the date of invoice as invoice is issued prior to removal of goods. So time of supply will be date of invoice that is 15th April. The next is Sham Limited located in Mumbai is receiving legal service from a lawyer Mr. Gyan registered in GST. The aggregate turnover of Sham Limited in the preceding financial year is 42 lakhs and this is taxable basically on reverse charge mechanism. Date of invoice is 15th of April. Date when the payment is debited is on 5th of May. And date when payment is entered in the books of account is 1st of May. So here, the date of payment will be the, you know, the time of supply because payment is made within 60 days from the date of invoice. So it is what? 1st of May. Date when the payment has been debited from his account or the date when the payment is entered in the accounts, which I say earlier. So an an answer will be what? In this case, date of payment that is 1st of May. The next is which of the following is not eligible for composition scheme under section 10.1 and 10.2 of the CGST Act 2017. ABC firm uh, selling garments solely in Ahmedabad having aggregate uh, Ahmedabad having aggregate turnover 78 lakh, 8 lakhs in the preceding financial year. It is eligible. Then a startup company exclusively operating a restaurant in Delhi having aggregate turnover of 98 lakhs in the preceding financial year. A startup company exclusively operating in restaurant in Delhi. Startup company is there. It is exclusively operating restaurant in Delhi. It is having an aggregate turnover of 98 lakhs. It is eligible. Then courier service company operating solely in Mumbai. It will be eligible under 10 to a not 10 1 and 10 2. Then uh, aggregate turnover of 90 lakhs. You will not be eligible under uh, 10 to a also because the aggregate turnover exceeds what 50 lakhs and traders selling grocery items in Odisha having aggregate turnover of what 95 lakhs in the preceding financial year. They are in 95 lakhs. So they are saying which of the following is not eligible to opt under 10 1 and 10 2 they are also eligible. 
So answer will be C in this regard. C will not be eligible here. C, that is a courier service. As the turnover exceeds uh, turnover, though turnover is 90 lakhs, but so service supply will not be eligible. Then next is which of the what are the assuming that the all the activities given below are undertaken for a consideration, which of the following is not a supply of service? Renting of commercial complex, it is taxable. An employee agreeing to no, not to work for competitor organization after leaving the current employment. Basically, here he, it will be what uh, taxable. Non competing fees, renting of repairing of mobile phone is also taxable. And provision of service by an employee to the employer in course of employment that will be what exempt. This is exempt. Now, during the month of May, Jet Limited sold goods to Y Limited for rupees two lakh fifty five thousand and charged GST at rate of eighteen percent. Now here they have sold the goods and they have charged GST. However, owing to some defect in the goods, Y returned some of the goods by issuing a debit note of rupees forty thousand in the same month. So here basically supplier is required to issue a credit note. Recipient may issue a debit note. That doesn't mean. Jet Limited record the return of goods by issuing a credit note on 40,000 plus GST in the same month. In this, in the same month he has recorded, in this the GST liability of Jet Limited for the month of May will be what? He has supplied the goods 2,55,000 and he has charged GST at rate of what? 18%. Now he has already charged GST at rate of 18%, 255. This GST has been charged. It is 45,900. Goods returned are worth 40,000 into 18%. He'll be able to reduce the output tax liability by this much amount, 7,200. So basically, it will be 38,700 rupees. 38,700 is the answer here. Then, C and company registered supplier of Delhi opted for composition levy under subsection 1 and 2 of the section 10 of the CGST Act 2017. It sold goods in fourth quarter for 15 lakhs exclusive of GST. Applicable rate on these goods is 12%. And C and company has purchased goods from Ramesh and company registered in Delhi for 955, on which Ramesh and company had uh, charged GST of this much amount. CN company has also purchased goods from Haryana. Okay. Here. IGST has been paid. Now they are asking for the GST, GST liability of CN company for fourth quarter. So they have opted for composition scheme. It will be 15 lakhs into 1% GST is there. That is 15,000 consisting of CGST, 7,500 and SGST. 7500 they won't be entitled to take any credit of itc because they are in a composition scheme they won't be entitled to take any credit the answer will be cgst 7500 and sgst 7500 next is ragu avails the services of raja chartered accountant as under audit of accounts of mr ragu tax audit for uh, accounts for filing of mr ragu and income tax return of mrs ragu's wife all the amounts are exclusive of taxes and applicable rate of GST on these services 18%. Now here the accountant has booked the entire expense of 70,000 plus GST in his books of accounts. Now Raghu will be eligible to take the credit of what? These two, that is 65,000 into 18%. So it is 65,000 into 18%, that is 11,000 and 700 rupees. Because this is personal purpose. Credit will not be eligible. So it will be 11,700 rupees. Then next is TT Limited registered in Rajasthan furnished the following information for the month of June. Interstate sale of goods 125 to JJ Enterprises in Haryana. It is an interstate sale. IGST is levied. Then interstate purchase of goods from XYZ Limited 
registered in Punjab. It is also subject to IGST, ITC. And his interstate purchase of goods from ARA registered in Rajasthan, IGST, ITC will be eligible. Now they say there is a new opening and a balance of the ITC and all amounts are exclusive of taxes. All amounts are exclusive of taxes. So they are asking for the GST liability to be paid in cash. So it is uh, 125 into 18 percent. That is 20 to 500. ITC will be eligible, will be how much? 1 lakh 5,000 into 18 percent. 18,900. That is 22,500 minus 18,900. That will be 3,600. Answer will be 3600 IGST. Next is Pradeep traders registered in Haryana sold interstate sale for 2 lakh 5000 to Balram Private Limited registered in UP. GST is liable at rate of 5% of goods sold. That is 2 lakh 5000 into 5% 5 is a liability. As per the terms of sale contract, Pradeep traders have to deliver the goods to the factory of Balram. Private limited for this, Pradeep traders have charged freight of 2400 rupees from Banrab. This 24 will be 100 will be included in the value of supply. And GST liable on freight, freight is 12 percent. That doesn't matter because here the principal supply is supply of goods. So this freight will also be included. Now they are asking for the GST liability. It's an interstate supply. IGST will be levied on 2 lakh 7400 at rate of 5 percent. 2 lakh 7400 at rate of 5 percent. That is 10,370 will be the IGST. IGST will be 10,370. Next is Prem and Sons has taken GST registration on 1st January but failed to furnish the GST returns for the next 6 months. Owing to this, the proper officer has cancelled its registration on 25th of July and served the order of cancellation on 31st of July. Now Prem and Company wants to revoke the cancellation, so he has to make an application within a period of 30 days from the date of uh, service of the cancellation order, 30 days from this date, that is up to 30th of the August, up to 30th of the August, he has to make an application for revocation of cancellation. Next is, XX registered in Delhi purchased books from PC traders registered in UP. Now they have purchased books from PC traders registered in UP. XX arranged the transport of these books from a GTA which charged freight of rupees 9000 for the same. They have charged freight of rupees 9000 for the same. GST payable, GST is payable at rate of 5% on GTA service. GST is payable at rate of 5% on GTA service. Then which of the following statement is correct in the given context? XX Limited has arranged transportation of books from GTA which is charged at rate of 9000. GST is payable at rate of 5% on GTA service. Now here they have purchased these books. Books are basically exempt from GST. But transportation services will not be exempt and GST of 450 rupees will be paid by XX Limited because it is registered under GST it will be required to pay GST of 450 under reverse charge basis. RCM will be applicable. Next is what? Sahil, a resident of Delhi is having a residential property in Vasant Vihar, Delhi. It has been given on rent to a family of 50 lakhs per annum for use as a residence. Now here, renting of residential dwelling. For use as residence. For use as residence is exempt. The same is what? Exempt. So fundamentally, service by way of renting of uh, residential dwelling for use as residence is exempt. So answer will be no, you will not be required to pay any GST on such rent because renting of residential dwelling for use as residence is what? Exempt. Next is about uh, 72nd question. Goods as per section 252 includes actionable claims? Yes. Growing crops attached to the land agreed to be severed before supply, yes. Money is not covered under the ambit of securities. Money and securities are not covered under the ambit of goods. So fundamentally, one and two are goods, one and two 
basically will be goods. One and two. It is answer is one and two. It is one and two. Then next is Mr. Z of Himachal Pradesh wants to start a new business and makes the following supplies in the first one. Interest rate supplies of taxable goods 17 lakhs. Then ex supply of exempted goods 1 lakh. And interest rate supply of taxable goods amounting to 1 lakh. Whether he is required to obtain registration if the goods are not handicraft goods or not, pro not predominantly made of handmade products. Well, yes, he will be required to obtain compulsory registration as he is making what? Interest rate supply of goods. So answer will be what? He will be required to may obtain compulsory registration because he is making interstate supply of goods. Next is determine uh, which of the following determine which of the following independent cases will be deemed supply, even made without consideration as covered in Schedule One. Now here A B and Associates transfer stock of goods from Mumbai branch to Kolkata depot for such sale of such goods at depot. Well, yes, it's a transfer, in the inter depot transfer. If they are separately registered persons, they will be, it will be covered under the ambit of supply. Then Mr. Raghuvir, a dealer of AC, permanently transfers motor vehicle free of cost. ITC of motor vehicle has been blocked. It will not be covered under the ambit of supply. And Riddhi, an employee, received gift from our employer on occasion of Diwali worth 21,000. It will not be regarded as supply. So answer will be over here, which of the following will be, case will be deemed supply. So only one, first one will be deemed supply, answer will be A in this regard. Then next is, PJY Limited is engaged in manufacturing of motor car. The company has paid the following amounts of uh, GST to suppliers against the invoice rate to raised to it. We are required to what compute here the amount of ineligible ITC. General insurance taken on cars manufactured by PJY. It will be eligible. Buses purchased for transportation of employees. It is eligible. Life insurance and health insurance for employees under statutory obligation will be eligible. Outdoor catering, so answer will be 350,000 rupees. That will not be eligible. Same will not be eligible in this case. Which of the following statements is or are correct under GST law? If the supplier is arrested, declared a value which is more than the actual value of goods or services provided, then he can issue what? A credit note for the same, or yes, it is correct. He can definitely issue a credit note. If the supplier declares some special discount which is offered after supply is over, then he cannot issue credit note under GST law for the discount offer. Yes. Under GST law, he will not be able to issue the credit note. If quantity received by recipient is more than what he has been declared in the tax invoice, then supplier can issue what? The debit note for the same. Yes. Then there is no limit to declare the details of debit note in the return. So they are saying which of the following statement is or are incorrect here in this particular case. They are asking for this which of the following statements are incorrect in this case. So basically in this particular case oh, this is what falls. So answer will be C in this regard. Then Messrs. Pulse is a classical singer. Miss Pulse is a class Pulse is a classical singer. She wants to organize classical singing function, so she booked an auditorium on 10th of August for a total amount of 20,000, and 5,000 is paid as advance. So here, time of supply will be 10th of August itself, to the tune of 5,000 rupees. And uh, the classical singing function was organized on 10th of October, and uh, the auditorium was owner issued the invoice on 25th November. Date of invoice issued is 25th November. And uh, Pearl made the payment on 30th of November. So remaining will be what? 10th of October. Within a period of 30 days, the invoice is required to be issued. So here, invoice is issued 
after 30 days so time of supply to the tune of 15,000 20,000 rupees 15,000 basically will be the date of invoice that is 10 date of uh, say completion of supply that is 10th October so the answer will be what here for advanced 5,000 rupees it will be 10th August and for remaining 15,000 rupees it will be what the 10th of October so time of supply will be 10th August for 5,000 and for 15,000 rupees it will be 10th October then ABC limited generated e-way bill on 12th of February at 14 hours then it is a uh, used an over dimensional cargo at a distance of 100 kilometers so it is 20 kilometers is the limit so it will be valid for five days and when the validity period of e-way bill will expire if there is no extension of the uh, same you know it will be valid for a period of say five days so it will expire on midnight 17th and 18th 13th, 14th, 14, 15, 15, 16, 16, 17, and 17 and 18. So the answer will be midnight, 17 and 18. It will be. It is valid basically for a period of say five days. Then exempt supply includes supply of goods or service or both, which attracts nil rate. Yes. Non-taxable supply. Yes. And supply of goods or services, which are wholly exempt under GST. Yes. So all the three are included, that is D, 1, 2, and 3. Then, Ram, an individual based in Gujarat, is in employment and earning 10 lakhs. And he is also providing consultancy service to different organizations. Basically, it is non-taxable supply. It is non-taxable supply. And he is also providing consultancy. And his turnover from supply of services is 12 lakhs. Determine whether Ram is liable to take registration as per the provisions of the GST law. Yes, because he will be required to obtain the registration here. In this case, as the aggregate turnover is more than 20 lakh rupees. Now here, for the purpose of registration, no as the aggregate turnover is less than 40 lakhs. No, basically, service of uh, in course of employment basically does not constitute supply. Here answer will be this because it is no supply case. It's not non-taxable. It is basically no supply case. So as services in course of employment does not constitute supply. Therefore, aggregate turnover is less than what? 20 lakhs. Aggregate turnover is less than 20 lakhs. It will not be covered. Then Harish Trading Company situated in Haryana is a dealer of seeds exempt by way of exemption notation and chemical fertilizers which are taxable. One is exempt and one is taxable he is about to cross the threshold limit of registration under gst and wants to opt for composition scheme under 10 1 and 10 2 his entire supply is made exclusively within the state of haryana being a chartered accountant you are required to what advice yes as the aggregate turnover is less than rupees 1.5 crores or say no as a person affecting exempt supply by way of exemption notification cannot opt under 10 1 trader cannot opt and one is no a supplier of fertilizer cannot offer composition scheme so fundamentally the answer will be yes he is eligible as his aggregate turnover does not exceed it is less than what does not exceed basically does not exceed 1.5 crores in the preceding financial year next is about Asian company is a manufacturer of hardware items he has purchased a machine he has purchased a machine on 1 6 2020 for 59,000 and 9,000 has been claimed as ITC, okay. Now, 1122 has sold the machine to an unrelated party for 47,200. Determine how much tax is liable to be paid by ancient company. Now, in this particular case, he will be reduced to require the amount of ITC to taken. 9,000 ITC has been taken. And uh, it has been from 1-6-2020 till the date of supply is what? one one. 22 it is 5% per quarter or part thereof so here in financial year 2021 how many quarters are there three quarters will be there April May June 
फोर क्वार्टर्स फॉर दिस देन फाइनेंशियल ईयर ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेंटी टू अप टू फर्स्ट ऑफ जनवरी ऑन फर्स्ट ऑफ जनवरी एज सोल्ड द मशीन टू अनरिलेटेड पार्टी ऑन दैट पर्टिकुलर डे सो बेसिकली इट विल बी थ्री क्वार्टर्स ऑन दैट पर्टिकुलर डे इट हैज बीन सोल्ड तो सेवन क्वार्टर्स नाइन थाउजेंड इंटू फाइव परसेंट इंटू सेवन क्वार्टर्स लेट एस सी वट दे आर डूइंग इज नाइन थाउजेंड इंटू फाइव परसेंट इंटू सेवन दैट इज थ्री वन फाइव जीरो सो नाइन थाउजेंड माइनस थ्री वन फाइव जीरो इट इज फाइव एट फाइव जीरो और द जी एस टी पेबल विच एवर इज से हायर सो इट बी रिक्वायर्ड टू पे सेवेंटी टू हंड्रेड दे विल बी रिक्वायर्ड टू पे सेवेंटी टू हंड्रेड हेयर वॉट एवर आई टी सी इज देयर इट इज टू बी रिड्यूज बाई फाइव परसेंट पर क्वार्टर पार्ट देयर ऑफ फ्रॉम द डेट ऑफ यू नो मशीन हैज बीन परचेज इन द डेट इट हैज बीन डिस्पोज ऑफ नेक्स्ट इज पी के ट्रेडर्स एंगेज इन मैन्युफैक्चरिंग टैक्सेबल एज वेल एज से एग्जेम गुड्स परचेज मशीनरी वर्थ सेवनटीन लैख सेवेंटी थाउजेंड एंड कैपिटलाइज द अमाउंट इंक्लूडिंग द टैक्सेस and claimed depreciation on it as per the provisions of the income tax act including taxes they have capitalized the amount and they have claimed depreciation now what will be the eligible itc in this case it will be zero since depreciation is claimed on gst element under itc under income tax so as you are claiming depreciation under income tax on the gst element you won't be entitled for any itc next is mr rahim wants to start a new business of trading of footwear in meghalaya now in india in order to expand his business he will also make such supplies to an e-commerce operator who will be required to collect who is required to collect tax at source now he wants in respect he as approach to advise whether he is required to regi obtain registration yes he will be mandatorily required to obtain registration because when you are supplying through a e-commerce operator who is required to collect tax at source registration will be mandatorily required the answer will be b in this case and while conducting gst audit of vishwa bank it was discovered that bank has not charged gst on certain supplies made by it in respect of determining the following supplies made by bank is taxable discount received on bills receivable that is exempt interest charge on loans is exempt interest charge on credit card service is taxable sale of foreign currency amongst banks is exempt so which is taxable is interest charge on credit card services so fundamentally these are what the 85 independent mcqs which we have discussed here